We've been looking at force and motion in two dimensions, and I want to take a minute to show you how that affects the normal force when we have a force that acts in more than one direction. So if I have a box just sitting on the ground, we know that the net force is zero because it's just sitting there, it's at rest. So we've drawn that before, and we just take our vectors and we're like, okay, we've got the normal force acting this way, and we have another part, another force that acts down, gravity, it's this way. And since this is an equilibrium, what we've always said is the normal force is equal and opposite to gravity. But that's only because this is an equilibrium because these are the only two forces acting. What if these aren't the only two forces acting? What if we have, like this is a sled and somebody's pulling on the sled this direction? Then what happens to the normal force? Okay. So let's actually take a look at that. Remember, the normal force is the force exerted on an object by a surface and that force is perpendicular to the surface. So let's actually go ahead and, and put some numbers into this problem and see what happens. So let's say this box or whatever it is, it has a mass of 30 kilograms. Okay. And let's say who's ever pushing on it or pulling on it or whatever I've got drawn here, say they're pulling at 25 degrees and this force is 200 newtons. Then I want to know how big is the normal force, and also if this is a frictionless surface, what's the acceleration of the crate? So I want to know what's the normal force, question mark, and what's the acceleration of the crate if no friction. And then I'm going to ask one more question. My last question is, if the acceleration is zero, if there is no acceleration, what is the coefficient of friction? Okay, and I'm going to assume it'll be in motion, so I'm going to say kinetic friction. Alright, so let's tackle this problem, and the first thing I want to do is start with the normal force. So this thing has a mass of 30 kilograms, so I've got two directions going on, that means I need to establish a reference frame, alright. So I want my positive y direction to be up, and I want my positive x direction to be right, so here's my reference frame, positive y, positive x. Now, Let's go ahead and start working in our dimensions. Okay, so I'm going to say the net force in Y is equal to, well, I've got this force, Fn, I've got this force, Fg, and I also have the Y component of this pulling force. So I'm going to say this is just Fy. So my net force in Y is Fn plus Fg plus Fy. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to assume that this is equal to zero. The only reason it wouldn't be equal to zero is if Fy is greater than Fg. And I know it's not because the weight of this thing, 30 times 9.8, is going to be around 300 newtons. And so this 200 newtons won't be able to lift it. The reason I can say the only reason that it would not be zero is if Fy is greater than Fg is because the normal force changes in response to this force. The harder I pull up on the block, the less the table has to support it or the ground or whatever it is. So the normal force will decrease as this applied force increases. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to set this equal to zero because it's not going to accelerate up off the table. So now I'm going to sub in what I know. I do not know Fn, okay, so I'm going to leave it alone. I do know Fg. Fg is equal to mg, and let's actually take a look at what I mean by that. Um, nope, not a net force, just Fg. So Fg equals mg. Okay, well, m is 30 kilograms, and g is actually negative 9.8 meters per second per second. Why is it negative? Well, I chose positive direction to be up, so that means the acceleration due to gravity is down, it's negative. So when I add this in, 30 times 9.8, I believe that's uh, 290. Four, let's see, 30 times 9.8, 294, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to get negative 294 newtons, which makes sense because it should be down. All right, and then I have plus Fy. Now, this is the Y component of that force, and remember, that's not the 200, so I'm going to find Fy. That is equal to F times, this is the side opposite of F, right? This force is F. So the side opposite of that angle, so that's times the sine of 25 degrees. So what I get is 200 sine 25, and if I throw that into my calculator, 200 
sine 25, I come up with 84.52 newtons. All right, so now I've got a whole bunch of stuff I can sub into this equation. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. I have Fn. I'm just going to write Fn because I don't know it. Plus Fg, but Fg is plus a negative, right? Negative 294. Plus Fy, 84.52. 84.52 equals 0. And the reason it equals 0 is because this thing is not accelerating in the y direction. So Fn equals, if I take that negative 294, negative 294 plus 84.52, I get 209.48. And then I'm adding it to the other side, right? So 209.48 newtons. So this is the normal force. You'll notice it is not equal and opposite to the weight force. It's a little bit less than the weight force because the rope is actually supporting some of the weight. So I've answered this part of my question. The normal force is 209.48 Newtons, and it is positive because it's in the positive y direction, right? Now it says acceleration of the crate if there's no friction. All right, if there is no friction, then the acceleration of the crate. I'm going to say the net force in x is just equal to f x, which in this case um, would be f times the cosine of 200, or not 225. Okay, but that is 200 cosine 25, and if I do that, 200 cosine 25. That is 181.3 newtons. So this equals 181.3 newtons. And I stop short here. This is equal to mass times acceleration. Well, the mass is 30 kilograms. The acceleration in x, I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and have to divide for that. So 30, acceleration in x. Divide both sides by 30. I'm going to divide this one by 30. And so 181.3 divided by 30 gets me the acceleration in x, and so the acceleration in x is 6 meters per second per second. All right, so that's because there's no other forces in x, so I can say the net force in x is just that, that pull from the applied force. The last part of this is says if there is no acceleration, that is to say that the forces are balanced, what is the coefficient of friction? If the forces are balanced, that tells me there's another force acting in this direction. That would be the frictional force, and I know that because friction always opposes motion or intended motion, so it's going to act against what I'm trying to do. So then it's just a matter of putting in all the information I know, um, this time assuming there is friction. So now I'm going to say the net force in x is equal to f cosine 25. This, this force hasn't changed, so I'm going to have, I guess I'll write it out, fk plus um, fx. And this is equal to 0 this time because it's moving at a constant speed. It's not accelerating. So I have fx, or sorry, fk, uh, frictional force, plus fx, which I actually know is 181.3, 181.3 newtons equals zero. So then I can subtract that over and I can say the frictional force equals negative 181.3 newtons, which is exactly what I thought it should be negative to the left. Um, so that works, but that's not the answer to the problem. It says what's the coefficient of friction? Well remember the frictional force is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. So now I can just say 181.3, and I'm dropping the negative sign because the coefficient of friction is a scalar value. It, it's a, it doesn't matter about direction. So 181.3 equals the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force, which we found up here to be 209.48. 209.48. And if I divide both sides by 209.48, 181.3 divided by 209.48, I come up with 0.865. So the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.865. And remember, this is a dimensionless number because the force in newtons over here, force in newtons over here, so I don't need any units on this number. It just relates how much of the normal force is converted into friction.